We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Wichita, Kansas, and we get to visit with Terry Harrison heading into his third season with the Friends Falcons. And I will say friend of the channel as well. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Coach, for you coming on and spending some time with us and giving of your time as you always do. So let's look really quickly. I know we talked about this just a bit in the spring, but maybe some folks, uh, this is the first time that they get a chance to, to see you here. Nine and two last season. I personally thought it should have been the playoffs. I know nobody in Kansas City asked my opinion, but if they had, that's the direction I would have gone. But realistically, though, nine and two and 23, four and seven in your first season there, coming off a one and 10 record in 2021 prior to you arriving on campus at Friends. It's a program that is trending the right direction. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Very excited to be here. Thanks for having me on, like always. I appreciate everything you do for, you know, all the small college sports, but specifically um, Fringe University. But, yeah, like you mentioned, great year last year, 9-2. and two. We lost two games, uh, one by nine and one by six. Or, I don't know. They were very close games. We lost at a down-the-wire type of games. And so just just knocking on the edge of being a playoff team. And like you mentioned, you know, maybe we should have been in the playoffs. You know, r regardless of that, we, we don't want to be a program that blames anybody. We just didn't quite – you know, make it last year, but it, it was really good for us. I think when I look, when I've looked back at that, obviously when you want to be a playoff team and it's selection day, um, certainly there, there's a level of disappointment when, when you, disappointment when you don't get your name called, but you know, a little bit of that, like you mentioned, you know, friends being one at nine, the year one and nine, the year before we got here uh, to four and seven in year one, lost some close games. I um, mean, then last year springboard nine and two, I think a little bit of that is like anything in life, you know, you kind of crawl, crawl, walk, run, right? That's a that's a saying that people say a lot. And you know, maybe we went from crawling to running, maybe a little quickly, and didn't quite um, didn't quite have to learn some hard lessons. But 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 definitely, last year was a great year. Um, you know, with the majority of our team coming back, I think um, you know a good argument to be ranked pretty high in your in the preseason. And you know, we've kind of do a, got to do our part on our end during the year to you know hopefully get a, a postseason berth this year. We talked a little bit during the spring during recruiting time, and I know that uh, you were happy with uh, you know with whom you were able to recruit. Springtime comes around. You all had 15 practices. Talk a little bit about that and how the spring went. And and you know you with so many people returning, so many players who had solid roles last year. You know, were they excited in the spring? Yeah, it was really great. You know, the funny part by practice three, it was kind of like we had just, you know, it was kind of like right back in the fall. We, we kind of, you know, we were able to keep our guys healthy. Um, you know, we don't really beat up our guys anyway. But, you know, this spring was all about being healthy, kind of uh, getting our getting ourselves kind of back to basics on some fundamental things. You know, ultimately for us um, to have success in the fall, if, um, you know, if we can, you know, reduce some penalties and not turn the ball over, you know, even last fall was a little different. So our guys were able to kind of focus in on that and we were able to, you know, really look at those things. But, you know, I think I told you before this, we're going to have 28 seniors in the fall and 24 juniors. So we're going to have 52 upperclassmen. And so there's a level of maturity now on our team. Um, and we've been here long enough now. It, it just feels, you know, very comfortable for everybody. And so I think that was um, – you could really feel that this spring, wait, me, even more so than last spring, even though we had been here a little bit. And so it was really fun. Um, our guys just know what to expect. We have a great team culture. Our kids absolutely love each other. Um, our staff love the kids. It's just it's just a fun place to be right now. And when you're able to do that, we're able to get some of those underclassmen that maybe more reps than they would have gotten otherwise and maybe some other places because we're so veteran experienced. And, and then obviously we were able to focus really hard on recruiting and, you know, bringing in our, you know, how it is. I hate saying it, but, you know, arguably the best class we've ever recruited, whatever that means. Some of that remains to be seen, you know, four years from now, but definitely a level of talent here that, um, you know, just, just sets us up for success moving forward. And we, we don't want to be a flash in the pan program. We want to have some sustained success. And um, I mean, it sure looks like we're going to be able to do that. Right. Well, on paper, it's nice to talk about some of those things on paper. On paper, it looks really good right now. Let me yep. tell you, there are numbers that are on paper already in the books from last season. One of the most prolific rushing offenses in NAI history last year. I'd like to start with the offense then and, and preview 24 right now. Cavante Baker coming back. He was uh, on our list, Midwest Sportsnet is one of the top returning quarterbacks, and, and rightfully so. A hundred, or excuse me, 1,268 yards rushing on an offense, by the way. Let me throw this number out there again because I think people need to know it. 4,611 yards rushing, averaging 419 plus yards on the ground each game. And not just Baker, by the way. I mean, you, you, there were five players last year that, that 
carried the ball for more than 500 yards uh, last season. So tell us a little bit about the offense. And, I, and again, I'm sure it starts with Baker. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. We um, we had a great year last year. Um, yeah, I think we led every 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 school in every division in rushing yard per game. So if you name a school, we ran for more yards than them per game. Um, and, and even more than that, we had we we were man. I don't know if they track it nationally, but explosive plays. It was man. We had really big plays. We weren't just eating up time of possession. I think it was about you know normally we've kind of owned time of possession. We didn't last year because we were having such explosive plays, and that's because. I mean, we have really good players, and you know, like you mentioned, Cavante, he'll be going into his junior year now. So, um, you know, back he's got two years left, but um, he was player of the year in the conference, and rightfully so, he led the country in touchdowns. And so, having him back now with a year under his a year under his belt um, only points to success for him. But more than that, he, he's just such a great teammate, um, awesome kid that the kids really rally behind, and he's just a you know, I don't think I've ever met anybody like him that that is as talented as he is. You know, loves his teammates and is able to celebrate their success and wants them, you know, to have the success too. And so that's been very cool. But you know, all of our ball carriers are coming back. I'm really excited about Lakin Cloud is coming back for a fifth year. Um, Elias Pino, who was who was very explosive, and then uh, Caden Rigsby, uh, Jet Cheatham, and Kirion Hadnot. Just all all of our slots are coming back. Um, and so that's that's a hard position. So that's really cool. All of our receivers are coming back. Um, and they were able to make huge plays in the passing game. We really needed some of those. So that's, you know, Kevin Green, Caden Lee, those guys. Um, so that's really cool. And then Austin Austin Pratt will come back from injury. So, yeah, we're at the skill position. You know, we could list all the names. There's just so many of them because they're all juniors and seniors. Um, and then our offensive line all returning, um, minus Keegan Martin, who had a great year last year, a record-setting year for an offensive lineman, um, Remington Award winner, four-time All-American, and, and, and likely could be the Wichita Area College Athlete of the Year for the Wichita Area Sports Commission. So other than him, which is a bit, you know, that's a big deal when you lose that kind of guy. Um, but we return a ton of experience in our two deep. And, you know, I think our offensive line, it, it, it will be the deepest offensive line, you know, one through three or four that, that I've ever coached. And those are my guys. So we're just – Really excited about offensive production, and I think, um, man, based on last year and this spring, we should um, have another great year and, and have an opportunity to at least, you know, put some points on the board and um, give ourselves an opportunity to win every game. You mentioned uh, Keegan Martin. He's and and by the way, I, you know, if he's the only one going, it's still that that leaves a little bit of a of a of a gap. Some some somebody's going to get an opportunity to fill some big shoes. On the offensive side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Trey Palmer, someone's going to get an opportunity to fill some big shoes there. But you have Nolan Ewing, among others, coming back. He led the team in tackles last year and uh, among other areas in which he had a big impact on the defensive side of the ball. Talk about your defense. Yeah, well, what you just mentioned, you know, one of the cool parts is we had senior day last year and we're still in that era. We're kind of we're almost out of the COVID year situation. But um, these are the last group of guys here between maybe redshirting as a freshman before we got here and some COVID years. I think almost everyone that walked on senior day that had any eligibility left is coming back. And so Nolan happens to be one of those young men that he could he's been really good in this conference for years. Um, he could have chosen to move on. Um, but because of last year and the success we had and, you know, coming up just a little bit short, he chose to come back, um, which is awesome. Just his leadership. And he's just a blue collar guy who comes and does everything right all the time. So him coming back along with Braden Gordon, Jacoby Smith, um, and then our other returners at corner, Cy Ponte, who's been starting since a freshman. So our, all of our defensive backs are coming back, like you mentioned, outside of Trey, who is certainly a difference maker. But we're really excited about some, you know, current players on our team like Kamara Guedes, who's a local kid, and some kid transfers we have coming in. It'll be awesome that we're here this spring. Um, but between those guys and our box, um, you know, all those guys are back, you know. And so it'll be all those familiar names that, that everybody has seen that really, I think what I mentioned, I think we talked about, maybe in the playoff show you did, I can't remember, but in the divisional play, our defense was as good a defense in the conference. And so the first six games, finding our way, kind of getting our, um, you know, getting, finding out who needs to be where. And then when we went into division, man, our guys were lights out. And so for us defensively, if we can start, you know, at some level where we left off, um, that's kind of, that's a big deal for us and what we're looking to do. And if we're able to do that, man, I think we, um, uh, we can have an offense and a defense that complement each other. Um, and, and that's what championship teams do. And for us to have any sort of success and for to be in that playoff scenario, you know, that's what we're going to have to do. And I can tell you defensively, those kids are, are very excited to do that. From the special teams vantage, Cole Thompson is returning as well. Maybe not one of those uh, fourth, fifth year players, but he comes back for you. Six for eight field goals last season. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that's a good asset to have uh, to be able to come in there and get some quick points for you when you need them. Uh, you mentioned Jet Cheatham uh, running the ball. He also was one of your leading returners last year as well, and he's coming back for you on special teams. Yeah, all those returns. So uh, Jet, uh, you know, probably statistically has has had a better career um, just based on opportunities and being out there. Um, but Elias Pino and Kirion had not, who are both slot. They're all three slots have been in the return game, done a great job. And like you mentioned, Con, uh, like you mentioned, Cole is, is returning, and he was six for eight. You know, some of that is we kicked some long field goals. I just have always been of the mind we're going to kick it when we're supposed to kick it and we're going to give our guys opportunities. And so you can chalk the two missed field goals were, were long. I mean, there were forty five plus yard of field goal attempts, which, you know, it just let them get out there and give it an opportunity. And, you know, in Kansas with the wins, who, I can't even remember who knows on why we might have missed those, but did a great job. We also had um, a transfer coming at semester, Connor Tillman, who is the leading, he's the leading point scorer in Kansas high school history, a Sedgwick, Kansas kid. Um, and, and those two did a great job this spring kicking, and, and they're going to be great weapons to have in the kicking game and punting game. And so, man, it looks, it looks really like we're going to have a really solid, solid special teams unit. Um, and, you know, you don't track that as much, but when you return 28 seniors and 24 juniors, those kids all happen to play special teams. So outside of Trey Palmer, where we're returning 99% of our special teams units as well. So, um, again, experience, you know, in any sport, in any level, middle school, high school, college, when you have some experience, that that tends to give yourself an opportunity to win a lot of games. And so, uh, we know for us that that's uh, that experience is going to pay off. And, and I'm excited to see those guys, you know, the special teams units take the field next year for sure. It'll get underway in less than three months. Then August 31st, and the, the Kessinger Division portion of your schedule. Well, you get mm -hmm. crossover play first, which I'm still getting used to saying in the case <laughs> on that. It's, been pretty much a full year, but it's still it has an interesting ring to it. So you have crossover play August thirty first at St. Mary to get your schedule underway. The next weekend, your first home game against Ottawa, the Braves uh, taking the the Bissell divisional mm -hmm. title last year. And that well, you get them at home though, and then through the crossover portion by week, and after that it is uh, at Southwestern. So the Kessinger division play, well, that's a a, a challenge to get started there. Yeah, no doubt. We've had, oh my goodness, with you know, you know, mentioned in Ottawa last year, they had a great year. We were able to make the playoffs. They did a great job. We were able to beat them on the road last year, which was you know a really good win for us. Looking back, you know, at the time, and you know, at postseason when you reevaluate, and those, that's a playoff team. That was a pretty big win for us. Um, anyway, those guys are doing a great job there. But like you mentioned, once we get past divisional play. Uh, man, our division's awesome. There's a lot of really good coaches. It's just the way the cookie the cookie crumbled when you split the division. You know, you got to do it somehow. Um, but we've had some epic battles with Southwestern between my time at our previous school and now, and every game has come down to the wire and been very competitive. So um, that'll be a tough one on the road that we'll have to be really ready to play for coming off that bye week. I mean, so our goal is if we can be healthy past that, that, that would be really good. And then hosting Evangel at home uh, will be big for us because, they again, they've done such a great job. And we were in a battle with them there. You know, I think it was their homecoming on their home field and our first time playing there. Um, and we just we just turned the ball to over too many times to win that one. So if we can do that, man, it's um, love the way our division set up, and um, it really will uh, you know allow us to be prepared to hopefully you know be a playoff team if if we can uh, take care of business you know in that in that post in, in our division um, you know post the bye week. So excited about it. Our conference is doing a great job. Great coaches, great programs. Every week seems to be you know extremely competitive and. Um, yeah, it's been really fun to watch the growth of the conference from 2018. And so for us, if we can, uh, we know the cool part is if we can win our division, if we can compete in our division and win our, and hopefully win that championship, man, we know that sets us up for postseason success. And, um, you know, that's our goal this year. And I think um, it'll, it'll be fun to watch and it'll be fun to watch all the teams in our conference. There's just so many great coaches and programs. Well, I, I agree with you, Coach. It, it has been fun to watch. The conference in, in recent years in, in football has absolutely been uh, enjoyable to watch and and the battles week in and week out especially as it's gotten into divisional play last season it was a lot of fun the friends falcons nine and two last season which by the way midwest sports saturday will be in wichita in 2024 this fall and a programming note we'll get that out there when we know for sure we lock in that day we think we have it but uh, when we lock in that day because I, I definitely i have to give a shout out to jake redcorn we, we have to get some tailgating in this year 
missed that last year, and so we're going to come up for that, Coach. Anyway, uh, I appreciate you being on the program with me. Coach Terry Harrison from the Friends Falcons, and Falcons looking for another great season in 2024. Thank you for previewing the team this year and spending some time with us here on Midwest Sportsnet. Yes, sir. Look forward to hosting you guys here. We'll get you a steak on a stick. Uh, Mr. Red Corner, take care of you. I appreciate it.